The Chinese economy is on the verge of a catastrophic failure that will see the nation collapse into ruin in just a matter of weeks. According to what YouTube has been trying to tell me at least, it's become a real hot topic around here lately, and by no means am I going to jump on the doomsaying bandwagon and try to confirm if this is true or not. The reality is, I don't know. I'm a little apprehensive about trusting anything that's being said by a dude bro who was bragging about buying Coinbase stock last spring and has now pivoted their channel to global economic analysis after their portfolio fell off a cliff and everyone realized that their investment advice was just digital snake oil. Now, that's not to say that everything is awesome over there either. They are objectively going through a rough patch in the People's Republic, and that's likely to get worse before it gets better. Now, we don't talk about economics, but we do talk about space exploration. And it's worth digging into what all of this turmoil might mean for China's space program. Because there's a chance that the most successful national space program that we've seen in decades could be knocked off the rails by economic chaos. Or is there? There are a few different ways to look at the situation, but I'm going to drop the hypothesis that an economic downturn could actually be good for the Chinese space program, even if it will almost certainly be horrific for the Chinese people. Let's see if we can support that theory. This is the space race. So what exactly are we talking about when we say China's economy is collapsing? Just a few years ago, they were the fastest growing economic force in the modern world, destined to take over as the new global superpower. They're certainly on their way to taking over the space race. If NASA can't get SLS and the Artemis program to work, which at the time of writing is still sitting broken on the launch pad, then we might as well hand the keys to the moon over to China. China leveraged their massive population and the unwavering dedication of those people to support their nation. The Chinese went through some really bad stuff to get where they are today. The Cultural Revolution of the 60s and 70s that killed millions, the economic reform of the 1980s that culminated in the Tiananmen Square protests and subsequent massacre. By the 1990s, more foreign activity arrived in China. US companies loved that they could manufacture their products in China for just a small fraction of the cost that it would be in the US and with higher productivity. China quickly became the factory of the world. Whatever tacky, cheap junk we felt we needed in the Western world, they could make it for us at pennies on the dollar. The Chinese workers became the fuel that fed the economic machine. The Chinese adopted the 996 working hour system. I don't know if you've heard of this one. This dictated the new standard working schedule as 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. This also killed a lot of people, just much less violently this time, so it was harder to pin on the Communist Party. Starting around 1995, China's gross domestic product began to rise massively and consistently year over year, and this growth fed the country's ambitions for space exploration. China quickly achieved their first human spaceflight, started establishing their own satellite infrastructure, landed a rover on the moon, landed a rover on Mars, landed another rover on the moon, and put a series of space station test modules into orbit that culminated in the Tiangong space station, which is now two-thirds complete. Obviously, 2019 was a bit of a turning point. We all started hearing about some weird new virus that was spreading around China and killing a bunch of people. China quickly went into a monumental and draconian effort to contain the situation that eventually spread to the rest of the world and put us all in the situation that we have today. Yay. But even through the heights of the pandemic, China's space program was virtually unfazed. On November 23, 2020, the Chang'e 5 mission launched a new rover to the moon. On April 29, 2021, the core module of the Tiangong station was put into orbit. On July 24, 2022, 
the second Wenqian module of the station was deployed. So we know that the Chinese government has no problem with forcibly confining their population with one hand while launching rockets into outer space with the other. And the people love it. The number one job that young people in China want to do when they grow up is become an astronaut. China's space program has inspired the population to dream big beyond the factory walls and into the solar system. But now China has a whole new problem. Their housing bubble has burst with real estate prices continuing to fall for the 11th straight month. This is a big problem because the Chinese don't invest in stocks and mutual funds and crypto like the rest of us. A lot of them store their wealth in real estate. Real estate is the foundation of the Chinese financial system. People own homes that are valued at 20 to 30 times their annual salary. At the same time, the Chinese government is clinging desperately to a zero COVID policy in a world where the virus is rampant and unchecked. And that's led to work not getting done on major housing development projects. The Chinese people have put down deposits and are even paying mortgages on homes that have not even been built yet and may never even be built at the current rate. Chinese developers are in big trouble because their business model relies on constant growth. They take out massive loans that they can't afford to pay back until they get more money to build more homes, which they finance by taking out new loans. But if they can't build homes, then they can't get more money. And if they don't have new money coming in, then they can't pay back the debt that they already owe. They certainly can't give the deposits back to the people who paid for the homes that they haven't received because that money has already been used to pay down the debt that the real estate developer couldn't afford in the first place. Some might call this a Ponzi scheme, but I don't know. So the people are pissed. The real estate developers are pissed and the Chinese government is starting to look pretty bad. And if things keep going this way, they might get desperate. And that's where the magic happens. Governments are a lot like magicians. They rely heavily on distraction and sleight of hand. If people are freaking out about one thing, you divert their attention away with something flashy. So if China's economy is weakening and the devotion of their citizens to the cause of working themselves to death is falling off as well, then what magic trick might they pull out to make everyone forget about that? Well, a demonstration of military force is a classic move. There's nothing like war to kickstart the economy. It works wonders as long as you win, so you'd want to pick an easy target. Let's just say it's a bad time to be a resident of Taiwan. But a more modern day 20th century approach to this situation has been to aggressively pursue space exploration. China has already gotten their people to buy into the space program. They have hundreds of millions of eager future astronauts at their disposal. So maybe instead of rallying the troops around waging violent war against some other here on Earth, what if China could rally their people around the common goal of conquering the moon? People might stop worrying about their condo that is never getting built on Earth if they're promised a free house on the moon, right? It sounds a bit crazy, but it wouldn't be that far off from what the United States has been doing for the past 50 years. Let's talk about that. One of the best ways to understand something is by analogy, drawing comparisons to more familiar things that we already have knowledge of. So I thought that we could maybe use the American space program as a good analogy of how a government might leverage their interstellar ambitions to distract from something else going on that would otherwise make them look bad in the eyes of the public and the other nations of the world. I had a hunch that we could find some coincidences, if you will, between major US space program milestones and periods of economic downturn, conflict, or generally bad publicity. And it's actually shocking just how well this lined up. So the first American to reach orbit around the Earth was Alan Shepard. This flight took off on May 5th, 1961, 
This was two weeks after the Bay of Pigs invasion in Cuba that was a failed coup to overthrow Fidel Castro by a faction of his own people. This rebellion was financed and organized by the US government. But people didn't know that at the time, so it's probably just a coincidence. Speaking of JFK, his We Choose to Go to the Moon speech was given on September 12th, 1962. One month later, Cold War tensions would boil over and peak with the Cuban Missile Crisis, a standoff that nearly wiped out human civilization. But Kennedy couldn't have known that that was going to happen, could he? Probably a coincidence. The first moon landing took place in the Summer of Love, 1969, the peak of the hippie counterculture revolution. By the winter of 1969, the US would hold two draft lotteries to forcibly conscript young men into combat service in the jungles of Vietnam, a place where many of them would die violently. The US continued to land people on the moon for the next four years as the Vietnam conflict escalated. So we know that you can fight a war and overcome a civilian uprising and run the most successful space program in history all at the same time. But again, probably just a coincidence and definitely couldn't have any modern parallels. The first flight of the space shuttle occurred in the spring of 1981. The summer of 1980 had seen the peak of the great inflation at 14.5% price inflation year over year and 7.5% national unemployment. Right now, we are freaking out over 9% inflation, and there are vastly more jobs available than there are people who want to take them. They had it much, much worse in those days. But the space shuttle was pretty cool. In 1998, President Bill Clinton was discovered to have been getting favors under his desk from White House intern Monica Lewinsky. Although the president insisted that he did not have sexual relations with that woman, this was the same year that the core module of the ISS launched to orbit. But again, gotta be a coincidence, right? <laughs> like, damn. In 2003, George W. Bush declared mission accomplished in his war against Iraq. In reality, the violence would escalate to its peak in the years from 2005 to 2007. In 2004, NASA Constellation Program was born with the vision of returning a human presence to the moon and even reaching the planet Mars with a crude landing. Some might call that a distraction if they were so inclined. In June 2017, Donald Trump signed an executive order to reestablish the National Space Council, a move that would birth the current day Artemis mission to the moon. This came shortly after Trump fired FBI Director James Comey withdrew the United States from the Paris Climate Accord and came under investigation by Robert Mueller for collusion with Russian operatives. But to be fair, Trump is literally always involved in some kind of controversy, so it's hard to call any one thing a coincidence. But that one does seem to have a strong correlation, maybe. In 2019, the year of Donald Trump's first impeachment, Vice President Mike Pence instructed NASA to accelerate their timeline for the crude Artemis moon landing by four years now aiming to put Americans back on the moon in 2024, which would have been the final year of Trump's presidency had he won a second term of office, which he clearly expected to do. What a triumphant and historic exit that would have been. But I'm sure this is not what Mr. Pence had in mind at the time, and he was simply eager to pursue scientific discovery. The timeline, most likely, was simply a coincidence. Oh, and this latest push to get Artemis 1 on its way to the moon just happens to come as President Biden is desperately working to recover from historically low approval ratings before a midterm election that will likely determine the fate of his government and shape America for the decade to come. So, what can we learn from all of that? Well, I guess it's that major breakthroughs in space exploration just have a habit of coming around during times of great economic or political turmoil. It's pretty weird. Not sure exactly why that is, but it gives promise for China and their ambitions for space exploration. Even if the Republic's economy were to go through a minor collapse, and even if there is a massive social unrest, even in the face of a violent crackdown, and 
even if they were to wage a low-key war on a very minor target like the island of Taiwan, history proves that it should have no negative effect on their space program. If anything, this will lead them to even greater success. I can't believe I just said that. If only someone could figure out why that is. I don't know. What do you think is going on? Let us know in the comments below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.